Yeah, no, it's it's on most of our shoots. Yeah, uh, everyone used to call me Mr. Helicopter for many years because we always had a helicopter <laughs> on right. set. Uh, but no, no, it, it look, it, you know, when you're when you sort of get to the pointy end of the of the um, commercial world, you your client have got particular demands uh, of what they want, and they if they want you to chase a car at a hundred mile an hour through a rocky gorge. The best way to do that is in a helicopter with a really good pilot. So how many people do you have within your team? What's the sort of structure that you've got running there? Uh, well, it all depends on what what we're doing. So from a commercial, am I still there? I, I think yep. so. Um, so from a commercial point of view, we've just got uh, the three of us that do most of that because I work overseas a lot. Even though COVID's happening and now a, a good portion of my clients are still uh, international. Uh, I don't really do a lot of work in Australia. Uh, but I, you know, I probably need to figure out how to get back into the local industry. Uh, but you know, it's, it's just, that's what happens when you, when I've been offshore for the last 15, 20 years, you know, yeah. shooting, big campaigns around the planet uh, trying to get back into my into um, you know the local market they were going well who are you <laughs> yeah, right. so uh, you know a lot of the, the big boys a lot of the big main players know that, that I'm around but a lot of these new kids that are sort of coming through uh, the market you know coming through the advertising industry they have no idea so which is fine I'll just have to send my reel out and hit the local market again but from a yeah. movie perspective, we we can sort of gear up to you know quite a few people to make it uh, to make movies pretty quickly. Um, you know, I feel that movies are probably a lot easier to make than TV commercials. Uh, uh, maybe they're a lot a longer project, but they're, they're probably, from my point of view, they're not that hard to make. Uh, but I think that's only because we've done so many, you know, super fast deadlined, um, super crazy budgeted commercials in weird countries at a moment's notice that when you have a film that you're doing very quite structured and really well thought out it's a breeze <laughs> so right <laughs> maybe i'm just used to it you know yeah. i mean a lot of people probably think uh you're mad mark you, you don't know what you're talking about but the reality is i do now i've done both yeah and um, yeah i felt like the movie side's a lot more of a slow moving uh monster rather than a fast moving lion yeah. you know a yeah. tiger about to rip your leg off yeah 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 that makes sense you don't have someone clients always put a lot of pressure on you it's one of the things i find the most challenging really with the client side of things is sometimes knowing whether that pressure is sincere you know do they really need something so urgently or are they saying that because i know that lots of people deliberately you know do those things as part of their kind of negotiation sort of tactic I like to try and be hmm. as transparent I suppose and upfront and honest as I can be um, and sometimes that's maybe been you know, to my detriment which I find I've found difficult at times I've just thought <laughs> oh, you know like no you'll be right I would have hoped that but being honest would have been a, a good thing but then there definitely been times I thought I probably should have just usually should have just uh, you know um, tried to cover that up somehow I don't know I, I just like to deal with people that value integrity and figure that if I have someone who doesn't then you know I'll find other people who do and uh, certainly I think as I've gotten older it's been more and more important now let's talk about these uh, adventures you know, I mean in your travels over the world and, and even just some of the footage there shows that you've been and seen some really interesting things you know and I'm, I'm someone who loves um just about everything you know in the world i'm, I'm in intrigued by a lot of things let's say i'm a very curious person um what's and i love travel what what and i'm not going to say what's been your, your your best because you've been to so many places i know it's probably hard but if you were thinking off the top of your head like top three uh top three experiences that you've had as a result of this career path that you've gone down what what would you what would they be I don't know. There's there, look. Uh, there's been so many. Um, yeah, when you sort of travel the planet with a whole bunch of really nice people, uh, you know, making ads and stuff. Yeah. Oops. 
I'm just kicking that mic, sorry. Um, it, it, there's every every country's got something different to offer you. Yeah. Uh, one one thing I do love is the people in certain countries, like um, in Indonesia, for instance, and you know Malaysia and all around that sort of that sub subcontinent there, yeah. and Cambodia and uh, up through Laos and Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam's probably a little bit uh, st- stronger people, stronger, uh, yeah. you know, harder people. But most of that area, it, the people are fantastic. They're just so beautiful, uh, so relaxed. Um, you know, you got to you got to have your head in a different space when you shoot there. You can't go over there wanting to go at a million mile an hour to achieve something because, you know, uh, the Asian people are very nice. You can't yell and scream and and and. and push your weight around you know being that westerner yeah. uh, coming over highfalutin carrying on like like a pork chop you've, you've got to be <laughs> respectful for you know religions uh people's uh, morale uh, morals over in those countries all the sorts of stuff but you know the reality is a lot of those countries are so beautiful to work in and so lovely and the people are so amazing and where they might be uh, sort of uh not so efficient in make in movie making it's mm. it's you as a Westerner, as an outsider, to leave a little bit of legacy there and and teach the locals how to do it. You know, teach teach the the crew how to be better at their jobs. You know, for for everyone else coming in to make them better, to make them more skilled. And the it's um it's something I really love to do. Actually, I really like to uh, make sure that we that we leave a, a good trail behind us. You know, of friends and and knowledge uh, and then there's you know there's other countries which uh, could eat you alive like uh, China for instance if you don't go over to China with you know with your A game um, you're going to get eaten alive because the Chinese are very fast and furious um, sort of people they really like you know the ultimate bargain they like everything done on time and to the highest level even though they're probably not paid for the highest level yeah. uh, but yeah, again, you can't go over there being a jerk either. You know what I mean? Because you know the whole world will just crumble around you. And then if you know when you shoot in America, for instance, it's uh, you know it's a big union type uh, world, and there's a lot of rules and there's a lot of a um, lot of things to slow you down in America. Really, uh, it's it, I, I'm not sure why they've made uh, filmmaking so difficult over there, but it, it's just the, the way it is, and you just got to fit into that system uh, as well too you don't you don't pick up shop bags you don't do things on set to try and help out because that's someone else's job right you, you just <laughs> yeah. got to go to your trailer and yeah and sit there thinking geez i wish i could help but yeah. um you know but all jobs are different again in, in the states it all depends again in the city that you're in like in la it's very regimented and they've got a system in place if you go in the midwest it's, it's great it's just like working here in australia uh, the non-union side working over there is really fun. Um, you know, shooting in New York is is actually one of my favourite places to shoot. I love shooting in New York. Yeah, you know, because right. you got this amazing, huge city palette to work in. There's just so many things and areas to shoot. You know, it's like the ultimate city. You know, yeah. for a film to to make a movie and and I've got a couple of uh, movies actually that were set in New York, which I obviously can't do now because, you know, it's. America's sort of falling apart at the seams right now, and the mm. the COVID's gone crazy. But we'll let yeah. them sort their uh, sort their shit out. But yeah. uh, you know, Eastern Europe is great to shoot in as well. There's a lot of really talented uh, people in Eastern Europe. The yeah. prices aren't too bad. They, you know, in some of the Eastern European countries are getting out of control because you know the American movies have been in there and spoiled everyone, and and yeah. now it's you know they've sort of lost their edge. But you know, you can get into like Kiev and Poland and yeah. uh, Romania and all that, and it's really good. There's amazing locations in there as well, and really good people. You just got to yeah. go over there with with a real plan and hope hope that they, you know, some of the Eastern European guys want to work in that plan. Yeah. You know, because they, cause they don't charge very much. They like to bring in a lot of people to fit, you know, to make it cost more. So right. I like to, you know, go into those countries to just really shoot lean and mean. Yeah, so many varieties and so many different, um, so many different uh, places. One of the things that I've also picked up on, and 
I don't know whether you'd say it's a signature or part become part of almost like what people would think of when they they think uh, think about yourself. Is it Toa? Is that how you pronounce your last name or Toya? Toya. Oh, mm. so close. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. I I've, uh, people have people have mucked it up for years, but it yeah. doesn't matter. I don't care. I'll go by any Toya. name. I thought my name was shut up until I was five. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just uh, a bad joke. My kids go, oh, Dad, would you, you're wearing that joke right out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all, right. it's all good for me. Um, one of the things I noticed in a couple of your profile pictures, uh, uh, you next to, uh, you know, <laughs> expensive, you know, some of the, probably the most desirable film equipment on the face of the planet attached mm. to the front of a helicopter or on one of those crazy big... Uh, crane style apparatus that people on put on the back of like a, a great big sort of uh, ute that they can swing around and um, do that sort of thing. Do you use a lot of that gear you know, when you're doing your work or is that more, I suppose, just, you know, uh, showing that you're like the rest of us that like cool toys in the filmmaking space? Yeah, no, it's it's on most of our shoots. Yeah, uh, everyone used to call me Mister Helicopter for many years because we always had a helicopter <laughs> on right. set. Uh, but no, no, it, it look, it, you know, when you're when you sort of get to the pointy end of the of the um, commercial world, you your client have got particular demands uh, of what they want, and they if they want you to chase a car at a hundred mile an hour through a rocky gorge. The best way to do that is in a helicopter with a really good pilot. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Or if you want to do high speed running down, you know, down the freeway and get all facets of that car, and you can only cap. You've only got the highway for like uh, thirty minutes, for instance. You need to then get the, like the Russian arms or the Ultimate arms or the Scorpio arms. You know, all those arm cars with the camera on the front, yeah. and you can go in there and you can shoot. You know, your headlights and tail lights, your three quarters, rears, front, everything in a very short time frame. Right. Super stable. So, if, you know, if you were to trying to achieve that hanging out of a window, you know, with your little DJI and your little A7S out the window, the success rate is right down, right? So right. Um, you'll probably get a similar shot, but you're not going to get many. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, you know, I've got certain uh, demands uh, on a particular project where you really need to deliver high quality stuff and a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, because we're not just doing one ad, usually these are footage for 10 other commercials. So, yeah. you know, having the right equipment, you know, it's, it's you really need, need to know what you're doing. You can't just jump in the car and hope for the best. Uh, yeah. You've got to go out with a bit of a plan. You've got to make sure the people that are swinging that boom, you know, around on top of the, um, on top of the cars, of, you know, with a half a ton of camera and crane hanging out the side of it, you know, that can kill people pretty quickly. So, you have to be. You have to make sure the people you're with really know what they're doing. You've got to make sure that uh, there's a really good plan and with all the safety people around you, the police um, are locking down the roads exactly the way you want to lock them down. Um, you know the camera assistants and all the camera gear is running perfectly, so you just don't have mistakes and you go out and you successfully capture those shots. 